you know, why would we be interested really in NLP? Well, for me, I think when you think about the concept of managing, it's when we perform well, what are the things that we are doing that cause our success? Now, a lot of the time, is particularly in sports, often people will come to me because something's going wrong or they're not performing. So they come as a, to me as a psychologist and they go, well, this isn't happening. And I'll ask them the question, okay, when, you, when it's working for you, what are you doing? And I, I would probably hazard a guess that maybe 80% of the time, the person doesn't know. Because they've never actually stopped and thought about what am I doing when it works well. Because when things are going well, we just carry on. We don't stop to think about that. Yeah. So the question is, is when we don't perform well, what are the things that cause our non-success? And for, for me, for how I'm thinking about this, is like we're saying, right, you know what? We're going along on this continuum and everything's lovely, thanks very much, you know, I'm all kind of like working really well. And then the wheels drop off our performance and it goes down here. And dependent on how bad it is and what it was and the impact it has and all sorts of things, it's dependent on how long we wallow around, you know, in, in a state of not performing well, <laughs> let's say. That's the kind of the polite term of putting it. And sometimes we hope that we will come back up. And it is a hope sometimes, because sometimes people don't do anything about it. They just keep bashing on, doing the same things that they did previously. And then we'd like to think that we would kind of like carry on doing this. So we've got this whole kind of area here of rubbishness, which I know isn't really probably a technical English term, but we're going to kind of like, we wallow around in the mire. And we wallow around in the mire because we don't really know what we were doing when we did it well. And the thing with looking at NLP and training in NLP is it's saying, right, what do we do in this period here when things are going well? And we compare it to what's happening when things aren't going well. And it doesn't matter whether it's somebody on the field of play, whether it's a colleague that you work with, you sit next to them on the desk and suddenly you know, their, their work output drops off or they're miserable or something is happening, but you know, where's the difference? So with NLP we kind of like saying, well, if we know what's happening here and we compare it to what's happening when the, the wheels drop off, we're looking put a plug in it to stop it going down further or to help it come up quicker because we're looking at this bit here. What's the difference? Now a lot of the time it will be around the areas of, well, you know, we're thinking differently. You know, if you, I mean, if you've got an athlete or you've got a team, and suddenly, you know, from one week to the next or one month to the next, they were performing brilliantly and then they don't perform brilliantly. Then, of course, you check on things like, you know, well, are you doing something different with your training program? You know, are you tired? Are you fatigued? Are you dehydrated? Are you not eating properly? You know, all of those kind of physical things that you would look at first. So all things being equal, if there are no changes, major changes around that, and nothing that we can see, then we kind of go, well, it must be due to how you are thinking about something. You know, what's happening around that area. So a good example of this, um, very quickly, is um, Andre Agassi, years and years ago, uh, world number one, not years and years and years ago, but a long time ago, sorry Andre, um, world number one, wheels fell off for whatever reason, started dropping down the rankings, slid down the rankings, couldn't get back up. Worked with his trainer, physiologically he was working really well. All of those kind of things that we would want to check were there, they were solid. So in the end he went to see Tony Robbins, um, who some of you will know, but he you know, he's written a number of books, he uses a lot of NLP, all of these techniques, and basically um, what he was doing is he was looking at what was the difference 
between here and here. So we got two videos of Agassi performing. One at a Grand Slam where he was world number one at the time and he was performing really well. So we got him to have a look at this video. He said, right, tell me what you see. So Agassi says, well, you know, I've come out of the change rooms and you know he's kind of a little bit bow-legged so he kind of like comes out and he's bow-legged and he's got his bag on his shoulder and he's got his long hair at the time and he was like, you know, smiling and doing all this to the crowds and what have you and then he sits down and he's looking all perky and he gets up and, um, you know, and Robin says, okay, great, so that's how you were, that's your physiology. And um, what, were you, what were you thinking at the time, what were you saying to yourself? He said, well, you know, I was probably saying something along the lines of, you know, come on, bring this on, you know, this is another one that's mine. L lots of, like, really positive kind of talk. So we've got the language patterns that he was using, specifically looking at, at language. And he said, and, you know, what, what did you believe at the time? What was, you know, and he was like, well, you know, I was world number one. This was mine. This, you know, this guy was not going to stand a chance. So we've got our beliefs. He said, and, and what was important to you? He said that, you know, I stayed at work at one, that I did this, that I proved that I was the best. So we've got our values. And then he said, okay, great. He said, now let's have a look at the video of you when you were, I think it was in the 70 odd down the rankings. I think it slid even lower than that. So we watched it. And he said, now you tell me what you see. And he said, hmm. He said, I've come out. He said, and I'm walking along, he said, and I'm quite flat, so my head's down. And, you know, I've kind of acknowledged the crowd, but I'm not really engaging that much. He said, and I've sat down at the side of the court, he said, and I've straight away put a towel on top of my head. So, physiology is different. He said, so, you know, what were you probably saying to yourself? And he said, well, I was probably saying, oh my God, you know, don't, I don't want to lose this one again, you know, I've got to kind of like stop this, da, 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 all that kind of like flow. So language and the patterns were different. He said, so what did you believe? And he said, I didn't believe I was going to win it. He said, and he said, what was important to you at the time? He said, not, not letting it be a landslide, not looking stupid, not looking foolish. So what he did was he simply worked around these areas and a few others to change physiology, to change the way he spoke about it, the way the language that he used to himself, because that's very important. He changed the beliefs and he changed the values. And up came his performance. And he got his ranking back. Now you can, you know, this, if you have a route around in YouTube, he talked about this on some American chat show, so you know, you'll probably be able to find the clip of... of he charged a million rand. It's what, sorry? He, he charged a million rand. Mm -hmm. Right. One million. Really? Wow. Well, there you go. So, you know, I mean, if, find this, go and have a look at it. It's not me just making some kind of like rubbish up. Yeah, so, and this is really what we're doing. We're saying, but... And the, the important thing about this is, is quite often what will happen is people will talk about this and they just bypass us because we take it on surface level. We take it on a conscious level and don't look underneath it because change occurs at the unconscious level. It doesn't occur consciously. Because yeah? if, if change occurred consciously, we would be able to make a decision about anything we wanted to change do it in the instance, walk out of this room and it would be changed. But it doesn't. Because all of our habits, all of our patterns that we run, all of the programming that we run is unconscious. It has to be, otherwise we would never be able to function. Because we just wouldn't be able to think of anything because our heads would just be too full. Yeah? We can only think roughly between sort of like, you know, seven plus or minus two bits of information at any one time. 
Yeah, so anywhere between five and nine bits of information. This comes from research in the 60s by a guy called Miller, and he basically looked at how much can we retain in our, what we would think of as our conscious mind, because the conscious mind is simply what we are consciously aware of now. Anything else is in your unconscious. So, you know, before I mention this to you, I bet nobody was paying any attention to how your bottom feels on the chair. Now you are, aren't you? Yeah, because you've changed your focus. Where's, where's your conscious mind attention now? It's on my bottom. Thank you very much. And in a minute you'll forget about that because your conscious attention is somewhere else. And this is a good thing because could you imagine the cricketers going out here, walking out to the creeks, at the oval and they're going right I need to move this muscle this muscle and this muscle to be able to lift my foot up and put it down yeah, and then I need to do this we'd never get anywhere so maybe we don't think about how we move our body okay well I need to think about how I hit the ball in right okay so I've got to have my hand in this position and in this position and put my foot here and do this and look they don't do it it's all in our unconscious anybody that has learned how to do something, whether it be typing, whether it be playing cricket, whether it be playing hockey, whatever we do, it's in our unconscious. It's what we look at as unconscious competence. Now, if we have learned that skill well, we are unconsciously competent at a, at a skill. And we're good at it. We can still be unconsciously competent at a skill and be rubbish at it which is the reason we have habits that occur over time. And we go, why do I keep doing that? Because we suddenly realize that consciously, we don't want to do that anymore. And unconsciously, it's ingrained in our neurology.